Let's talk head to head categories and head to head points strategy up next on Fantasy Baseball Today in Five. Welcome into FBT in Five. Today is Tuesday, March 14th. I am Frank Sample, joined by Scott White. And let's do it. Head to head categories and head to head points, Scotty. What do these two formats have in common? Well, what they have in common is smaller starting lineups than the typical Roto lineup. It depends how your league's set up, of course. But if you're just looking at default settings, normally in a head-to-head league categories or points, you're not going to have a second catcher or a middle infield spot, corner infield spot. You're probably just going to have three outfielder spots instead of five. And so what that means is it's more important to get impact from every spot. I think these are the formats, these head-to-head formats are the ones that favor a tiers approach more. They favor position scarcity more. I mean, a roto line is so deep that you're probably going to have uh, a less than amazing player at a spot or two, but you can't afford to do that as much in head-to-head because there are fewer ways to differentiate your team from everybody else's. Uh, and, and I would say that applies, you know, whether you're talking categories or points. I would also say that just given the current environment we're in where pitching is becoming more plentiful and hitting becoming scarcer, uh, I mean, I kind of like emphasizing hitting early in all three formats, Roto included. But in these formats, especially head-to-head, head-to-head categories and head-to-head points, because you're trying to get impact from every spot, I do think it's especially important to emphasize hitting early. And yes, I'm saying that even about head-to-head points, knowing that traditionally that's been considered the format that favors pitching. I think, um, I think that point is overstated. And I think now that we are back in an environment where pitching is more plentiful, where there is more of a middle class. Uh, I'm I'm not any less inclined to load up on early round hitters in a points league than I am in a categories league. All right, well, let's talk about the differences now, Scott, because there is a bunch. When we're talking about head-to-head points, I think most of these formats are weekly lineups and you're going up against one opponent. Head-to-head categories, a lot of them are daily lineup leagues, Scott, where... You know, there's different ways to track standings and all that kind of fun stuff. And, you know, you can use the daily lineups to your advantage. And there's a little bit more strategy. So the differences between the two, what do you think there? I mean, the biggest difference is just how you're evaluating players. Of course, stolen bases, as in a Roto League, are much more valuable in a categories league because they're a fifth of the hitting production. And in a points league, they're valuable. There were two points apiece, but they're inessential. All the contributions a player can make are going in the same bucket. So if you don't get any steals for your team, it doesn't matter as long as they're scoring points in another way. Um, also, there are contributions in a points league that aren't valued at all. Strikeouts for hitters cost them, costing them points. So that obviously changes the evaluation of players as well because certain excel in those areas that causes their value to rise or lower in a points league relative to a categories league. Um, other differences, I think you have to consider, you have to consider ratios for pitchers much more in a categories league. Like you're, you're, you're emphasizing ERA and whip, uh, strikeout rate more when a points league, it's mostly about volume for pitchers. And that's part of the reason why in a points league, I don't think you have to load up on pitching early is because you can make up for a lack of quality with a lack of, uh, you can make up for a lack of quality with quantity easier in a points league by just loading up with a bunch of pitchers on your bench, streaming two star pitchers, playing matchups. There's not as much risk for a pitcher giving up a bunch of runs or a bunch of base runners because ERA and whip aren't scored individually in a points league. It's just more about totals. It's about how many points you get from innings versus how many you lose from those negative contributions. Um, In a categories league, I think, um, you know, you might you might consider punting a category. Stolen bases, I think, would be most likely since you want impact from every spot if you don't happen to fill stolen bases early in drafts with hitters who can contribute things other than stolen bases. They're probably not worth pursuing at all. 
And obviously, strategies like punting don't come into play at all in a points league. Again, it's just about getting the maximum impact you can, regardless of what it is. So it's kind of a pure evaluation of players in points leagues, closer probably to the way a real-life organization would ev- evaluate them. Yeah, uh, I think it's totally viable to to punt something like steals. It's such an independent statistic, or go with something like a marmol strategy where you're <laughs> drafting mostly relievers and and you're punting starting pitcher and, and wins and, and all that fun stuff. So there are definitely multiple ways to win in all fantasy sports. But man, in, in head-to-head categories, you can get you get pretty crazy with your uh, with your strategy there. For more extensive fantasy baseball coverage, listen to the Fantasy Baseball Today podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcast, the Odyssey app, or anywhere else podcasts are found. Thanks for listening to Fantasy Baseball Today in 5, and we'll be back again tomorrow. Bye-bye! Bye-bye!